Oh, goody. All right, what's up, everybody? Zombies here again, and today we're back with another Mercenaries video. In this one, we are having our third NA draft. So if you haven't seen it before, draft is a really fun, interesting way to play Mercenaries. Super unique, very different than anything you'll experience on the ladder. And it really lets some of the lesser played mercenaries or compositions really have their own moment to shine. And the gameplay is just really fun. So uh, this one we did a few weeks back. It's taken a little bit longer to edit this than I had initially planned. Actually, at the time of recording this, we're about to be doing the fourth draft. But this one is going to be our first draft with the new mercenaries since the big drop. So... Very different environment than our last few drafts, which should be very exciting. So we're going to get right on into it here. This is edited down from the full version over on Twitch. So we got the downtime all cut out to make it a little bit shorter. And yeah, so we're going to get into the games here and the whole draft phase. Before we do, if you enjoy this type of content, do remember to like and subscribe is a ton to help out the channel and keeps the mercenaries videos coming without further ado let's get into na mercenaries draft number three so we start off with bands so we have our whole we have our whole list of mercenaries here we're going to do it in order so sir jack gets the first ban looks like sir jack's banning yulon which is fair <laughs> yulon's very strong uh yulon Go into the bans. Uh, then we have the Bancient One. What would you like to ban? Trigor, good pick. See ya, Trigor. Then Lepton gets to pick. Yasharaj, good picks. We find them. Oh, it's A to Z too. Oh, that's fantastic, actually. That that's gonna make me searching for things much easier. All right, so Yasharaj, all protector bands so far. Uh, Kpar, you're up. Localar. <laughs> all right. Localar. See ya. Then Izzy's. Vol'jin. All right. I'm liking these bands. Then Master Puppet. Valera. All right. Wait, where is Valera? There she is. Bye, Valera. I'm up. Uh, let's see. Who do I want to ban? You guys picked a lot of the good ones. Um, I'm going to ban Sinestra. And then Zampage for our final ban. Belinda. Okay. See you, Belinda. All right, so with that, we have our bands. So our bands are Yulon, Trigor, Yasharaj, uh, Lokalar, Vol'jin, Valera, Sinestra, and Belinda. Diablo, all right. And then the Bancient One. <laughs> Murgle's fate is in the not picked row. Nefarian, all right, cool. And Lepton's up. Mouth. Cool. And K Par's up. Mukla. Then Izzy's. Varden. And Master Puppet's up. Karen. And it's me. Um. Very good picks here. I'm gonna go with Maestra. And then Zampage. Zampage gets a double pick. The Red Naga and the Blue Dragon. So, Athissa and Anixia. Okay. Back to me. Um, Honestly, I think Vash could be really good in draft. I think I'm gonna go with her. Yeah, I'm gonna go Vosh. Uh, Master Puppets up. Cornelius, okay. 
and Issies. Chigi, okay. And Kpar. <laughs> Guff, okay. Yeah, Rip left in. <laughs> Got sniped. That's the funny thing is when you you can like pick to deny somebody else. That's happened quite a lot. It's pretty funny. Mergle Gaming, let's do it. The Bancient One. And then Surjack. Jaraxxus. Okay, cool. And then Surjack. Oh, that's a snipe on Surjack, right? No, no demon lord for you. Get in. Okay, so fire. Alright, so we have our first round picks. I like it. And then these, the last two are going to our not picked pool. Alright. Snipe in the Elise. That's pretty scary for nature. Um, Kpar. Tyrion. Cool. Alright. Then it is Issy's. Deathwing. Ooh, I like it. Spicy. A master puppet. Queen. That's a good pick. Oh, I'm up. Um, okay. Oh, you you took my queen. I'm going to go Zajara. Yep, you're up, Zampage. Thrall. Okay. Then Surjack. Oh, Surjack could get Rag. That's kind of scary. Diablo, Baron, Rag. <laughs> oh, really? Lich King? Okay. Interesting. And then Debanchit one, you get two picks. Zoth and Rathorian. Okay. Rathorian and Zoth. There we go. Goes back to you, Sir Jack. Yeah. All right. All right. Then back to Zampage. Andar. Okay. Well, that's me. Um, Probably my boy, Leroy. Yeah, it's going to be Leroy for me. Then Master Puppet. Hook Tusk. Cool. I was tempted to go Hook Tusk, but I already have two blues. Though she could be a green, too, which is cool. An Izzy's. Sneed. All right. Let's do Sneed. And then Kpar. So you'll go Yorel for the meme. All right. And then back to Lepton. Lepton's going to pick Varian. All right. Zyrella, Cho, and Rakara are getting sent to the Shadow Realm. What are you thinking, Issys? Samuro. Okay. Need a green, right? And Master Puppet. Zakis. And it is me. Well, I need a red. Probably going to go with the Naga. Is there any other red I could use that's good with my comp? Nothing with a lot of synergy. So I'll go with the red Naga. And Zampage is up. Blink Fox. Okay. And Sir Jack. Cookie. It's a good one. And the Bainshit one's going with Voon, the, the sole green of this bunch. I would have taken him, but I really needed a red. The yeah, Abrukan, that makes sense. Got most of the nature squad, it's pretty scary. Then uh then Kpar gets the double pick. And wind. Got some holy stuff going on. Yeah, going with Cariel. Alrighty. Then we're back to Lepton. Brightwing. Oh yeah, there's another nature unit in there. And the Bancient one. Manoroth, okay. Demon Gang. And Sir Jack. Grumash. And Zampage. God damn it, Zampage. <laughs> News out. 
I wanted fucking Uzo. I was trying to keep quiet about it, too. Yeah, I'm between Drek'thar and Vanessa. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah, the combo. Yeah, we're going Drek'thar. Screw it. Screw it. We're going Drek'thar for the combo. Natalie. Oh, that's pretty gross. Oh, God, dude. What did we do? Look at that. The Queen, Kazakis, and Natalie in one comp? Ugh. It's a little scary. Though Master Puppet has zero greens. And then Issy's to, to close it for our third pick round. Vanessa, all right. Throw these into not picked. But I think I really want a second red. So I'm going to pick my Ev. So then Zampage is up. Zampage going with Galvangar. That was one I was considering too. And Siri. Siri going with Rogers. His team's looking mean. I, I like his team a lot. It's like good stuff with a fire theme. The Banshee one going with Long Jin. And Lepton's up. Lepton going with Sylvanas. Then we got Kpar. Reno from Kpar. He's got a humans theme going now. Then Izzy's. Edwin. All right. And then Master Puppet with the double pick. Scabs. Mullahu would be proud. Tamsin. All right. Back to Izzy's. Eudora. The pirate man. I like it. Oh, he's got a, he's got four pirates. That's pretty cool. And Kpar. Tyrael. <laughs> All right. I dig it. Back to Lepton. Yeah, you'll make it work somehow. Oh, left in Anaconda. Wow. Good nature. And then back to the bench one with Tyronda. And Sir Jack. Uther. Back to Zampage. Zampage is going to take Murky. That leaves me with our final pick. Oh, uh, you left me with some good ones, huh? <laughs> Jeez. None of these do anything with my team. I suppose there might be an argument to Mutanus just as a taunt. Definitely not Velen. It's Mutanus or Millhouse. I think we're gonna go Murloc Gaming, Mutanus. All right, we have our draft comps. So I am going to uh, take a screenshot of this and we'll add it to the doc. And then we can make a bracket and get this going. All right, I'm just about ready. I'm going to go grab some water here, and then uh, we'll probably get into game one versus Zampage. But yeah, everyone else, feel free to start your games. Just make sure to let me know in chat when your game is over, what the score is, and I will update the bracket. And then for all the, uh, the rounds after first round, we are going to spectate all the games. So I'll be right back, and then we'll start it up. Good luck, everybody. All right, so looking at what Zampage has brought here, I'm expecting an Anixia Murky lead. Maybe Anixia Murky Galvangar. I'm kind of fine with that, though. Uh, we do have to think about our positioning, though. <laughs> um... I think I want Drek'thar in the middle. 
Because Drek'thar is swapping for Maestra. Uh, he cannot, Kpar. He gets frozen. Alright, Thrall, Anixia, Galvangar. Alright, so he's going real in on uh on the, the damage, huh? Maybe I should have had the slower equipment versus this, but nothing we can do right now. I think we just try and deal decent damage. Vash is going to get owned, yeah. <laughs> well, that's alright. Maybe, uh, maybe Drek'thar will hit Thrall. Oh no, this is actually terrible because she becomes green. <laughs> Don't really want her to be green. Uh, it's four speed, so we can combo it. I think we just redeploy Drek'thar. No, we kind of need a blue, though. Maybe it's actually Maev? He doesn't have... Oh, I, is he going to send in a blue? I don't think so. So I think we do Maev. Fox, okay. This is actually all right. I'll gain seven. So that's enough to kill that, so I don't need to aim that there. I do need to combo it, though. This will deal 25, so it's 50, 62. We could also summon. Summon actually seems kind of reasonable. Oh, we can't summon, though. We cannot summon. Okay, let's try this. Ow, that kind of hurt. Freaking Blink Fox. See a Thrall. Yeah, I was scared of the Frightening Shout. Ugh. Job done. Yeah, I think I do want um, Witch's Curse, actually, for the damage. I was thinking the extra health would be more worthwhile, but it might not be. Attack an enemy, death blow, store 25 health to this merc and gain their roll. Okay, that's actually quite good here. Assuming Blink Fox doesn't do something silly. Freeze a character. Uh we'll probably freeze. Or we could we could do a summon. Summon's actually not terrible. We do this to get damage in. Kind of like freezing this. Wait. Wait, why can't I freeze it? <laughs> oh, it cannot be frozen. <laughs> I mean, maybe we freeze the fox. Eh, we're just going to summon. We don't need to freeze. 
I didn't realize he had the can't be frozen equipment. That's kind of cool. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, that's a very, very large Vandar. That's a yikes. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised the targeting restriction exists too, to be honest. 41. Oh god, we can't even ah, Jesus. Um I think it's Drekthar. Damn. This is so bad. <laughs> I think we need to fell corruption. We can. L l the only thing we can do with my Ev is in prison. I guess we just punch this. Job done. We could. Is there something better to freeze? What does this do again? Probably just that. Oh, they riptided. Ugh. Oh, jeez. And they blink boxed. Oh, that's so not good. We're like very dead here. <laughs> well played by Zampage, though. I need to change up my strategy a bit, I think. Yeah, at least we have chicken. This is true. We're gonna Leroy Jenkins for funsies. Alright. Alright, so Zampage is up. 1-0. Alright. Assuming they open the same... I think we want to open like this. Let's try this open. Oh, we did not want to be across from Blink Fox. Heal 20 to the lowest health. Attack an enemy. Summon a Fathom Guard. Cross combo. Summon a second one. Do we have any crosses? We do. But it's at 2. I think we just want to hit it. Job done. <laughs> they ordered chicken because Leroy. Uh, I think this is a pretty hard matchup for us. Oh man, if I had my witch's 
curse item thing, I think I could kill him. I guess we have a five speed, which I can go for. We have to go for it. Oh wait, we have... no. Do we ever just ramp this? Seems bad. Job done. No, they sniped it. Oh god, Thrall's gonna make us very unhappy. Thrall only gets one hit though. Uh, oh no, we killed it. We killed it. We won the flip. Oh, okay. Okay. Direct our time, I think. Just for the health. Let's get on. Murky and Tide Mistress. Oh, oh, oh my god, they have so many summons. There's no way Drek'thar lives. We take it slower. Oh man, I wish I had a Diablo right now. <sighs> the summons are actually really scary with uh with Galvangar living. Wait, what? Why did that take twenty? My have a hundred percent. Oh, we actually swap them both. Uh, okay. I mean, it's not over yet. Oh, Riptide, Riptide, gotcha. Shows you how much I've played against some of these characters. <laughs> I mean, it's not over. Oh god, that hurts though. It's pretty over. <laughs> Ugh. What's their last red? Oh jeez. We do not have an answer to Vandar. We can kill Murky and then die a horrible death. <laughs> Job done. Ow. Yeah, I'm dead. Well played by Zampage, though. So Zampage will advance. 
just is very, very long. I'm open to trying it again, though. Avatar was three speed and zero cooldown for most of development. Yeah, that sounds awful. All right, so, uh, let me just ask. So, looks like Sir Jack has a pretty good position here. The third game, so it's tied 1-1. One, one. Interesting. Oh, that's a good point, Garrison. Maybe we'll try it like that next time. Job's done. So, let's see. Looks like Sir Jack's trying to... heal up the Rogers. But even though Master Puppet's down a mercenary, I think having that healing with the, the Queen and Shadow is going to be really good for him. Yeah, look at that. Oh, but wow, redirecting that damage completely killed Cornelius. So maybe that wasn't what he wanted to do after all. Uh, what was the, the score, Lepton? Yeah, I, I got knocked out first round too. We'll probably do, yeah, Swiss or Round Robin next time. I like that idea. We did it originally. Alright, K-Par 1, 2 to 1. Well, at least you had three game series. We're watching game three here of Master Puppet vs. Sir Jack. It's looking really good for Sir Jack, though. However, it's not over yet. That scabs looks like it could be a problem. And Surjack doesn't really have great burst damage. However, he can combo the Apocalypse with Geddon here, which is pretty gross. Uther is probably going to die, but Uther probably already did enough to where it's fine. He summoned the golden monkey, that's amazing. <laughs> with her with the healing. Looks like Queen will go down here. That is a lot of damage on the uh the get an end. Nice playing around taunt from Master Puppet. I do think Sir Jack is favored here, but it is certainly not over yet. So it looks like he's going for the taunt again, which makes sense against the scabs. And now just going to fire stomp into combo the Geddon. However... Wow, the Uther's actually doing a lot here, huh? Blocking that scabs at two speed. Later, Lepton. Thanks for playing. So what is Master Puppet thinking here? You gotta slow with the Karen, I'd imagine. Yeah, we're doing a single limb this time because we had more people. Oh, wow, the heal. Wow, and just like that, Master Puppet's kind of turning it around here. I did not expect that, but the speed up makes a lot of sense, actually. Make sure you're going before Diablo. 
Now, there is a way to hit the scabs here, but even if Grom does hit the scabs, it's not great. All right, it looks like they're going to try and go for sniping down the Natalie, which seems necessary if you want to win this game, as Natalie is kind of the big problem right now. And down goes Geddon. And now it's looking like Sir Jack is in a pretty good spot again. So, what are they thinking here? I mean, it's still looking good for Sir Jack. Right? Yeah, I mean, he is slower. So the, the Diablo's not doing a whole ton here, but that Diablo's just so hard to kill. Yeah, that Diablo's just so hard to kill here. And now they can, now he can just slow the... Yeah, I think Sir Jack has this. He's going to slow the carrot and then kill it. And then the scabs is just not going to have enough damage after the additional health. Oh, but the slow. 26 and 53 is still not enough, right? That's 79. He's two damage off. Damn. Yeah, literally, Master Puppet is two damage off lethal here of killing. Actually, no, it's it would be more because the Karen's going to die. So it's actually be 12 off. But still, very, very close. I guess she could go for a tie by going for the scabs. You could go for a tie, actually. Go for the scabs. Um... If he goes for the scabs... Oh, no, this repeats still. No, it wouldn't, right? How slow is scabs' the slowest thing? There's actually a chance here for a tie, I think. Master Puppet sees it. You have to swing with Karen, and then use skill one with scabs, and then attack with scabs next turn. Wait. Oh, wait. Wait, is skill one not attack? Oh, oh, he didn't have access to skill two. Never mind, never mind. So Sir Jack has this. Wait, fatigue. Oh my god, fatigue, it's a tie. Wow, well played by Master Puppet seeing the out there just waiting, not doing anything with scavs for a turn. Wow, <laughs> well that was cool. All right, so Sir Jack is going to... Looks like the same opener as last time. Lich King, Uther, and Rogers. Interesting. And it looks like Master Puppet is going to change it up. Actually, this might have been his open last time. We, we went into uh, Game 3 a little bit late. All right, this is interesting. So it looks like Sir Jack knows from last time he really has to deal with that Natalie. Running the uh, the heal equipment on the Lich King, that's interesting.
job done. So now we're gonna heal on the Rogers. Looks like he's just trying to build up a very big Rogers using Lich King as mostly support here. And I kind of like it. It looks like the the whole opener here is kind of a support based opener to build up a Rogers that gets kind of out of control. Healing from Natalie, really not doing a lot there. Job done. So far, I'm definitely liking Sir Jack's position here. But it is going to take more than a, a one Merc advantage to win this game. Master Puppet thinking here about what to send out. Only has one green, and you do have to be careful here. Because that Rogers is hitting very hard. In comes the queen. I like the queen here, because you are going to leverage a lot of shadow synergy and healing. Also prevents Rogers from critting anything. But Rogers, like I said, doesn't really need to crit. She's just dealing a lot of damage. And we're going to see another Lich King heal here, probably. Which I like. Job done. All right, Lich King does get sniped. They do go for the uh, the taunt, which I I quite like against Rogers. You really got to protect your stuff here. In comes Diablo. Makes a lot of sense. So it looks like going for the queen here. I think going for the queen makes a lot of sense. The queen is going to be the, the problem character. And Diablo really isn't that bursty. I mean, Rogers is the burst here. Master Puppet really needs to find a way to deal with Rogers. Job done. It's going to come down, I think, to what this green is off the bench. Ah, yeah, it's Scabs. How could I forget? Oof. Well, Scabs does have a powerful two-speed attack, but Uther actually has been very, very clutch here for Sir Jack, making it kind of hard to get through the Rogers. Looking like a very favored position for Sir Jack here. Yeah, I'm really liking, uh... I think Sir Jack had a very clear game plan. Just ramp this Rogers out of control. Really didn't even worry about his Lich King dying, as long as it kept the Rogers safe. And now Uther's just been incredibly annoying here, just being the taunt wall. If Uther wasn't there, Rogers would be dead right now. Job done. But Uther doing some serious work here. Now, Karen can speed up here, but again, you can't get past this Uther. Yeah, the, the, the buff to Uther here making a huge, significant difference. Oh, and looks like, wait, did he just target Rogers with it for the heal? Very interesting. I guess he's saying I don't really need to block it because Scabs is slower, but... I don't know. I think it's still better to taunt yourself. I guess the play worked out for him, though. Because he went for the Wicked Scab. Look at that. So that was like... A, that was like... Those were some huge mind games. 
So Master Puppet didn't attack because he was expecting the Uther Taunt. And because of that, he didn't attack and opted to go for a slower ability with Scabs to get around the Taunt. But Surjack said, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I'll just heal the Rogers. And killing the Karen there is huge. I don't really see how Master Puppet can come back from here. Because that Rogers just did so much work. This Diablo is going to keep growing from all the stuff that's dying. You do have to be mindful of the scabs. The scabs can get pretty big, but... And going stealth there is quite, quite nice. And I do like getting in the damage there, even though uh, Karen dies, but... I think this advantage is going to be too much for for uh, Master Puppet to overcome here. He can essentially one-hit this Baron Geddon, which is pretty sweet. But I don't think he has enough. I mean, I think it is going to be close, though. I do think it... Oh, actually, Grom... Okay, they're just going for the slow. Grom could, in theory, do uh, skill 3 here and hit through stealth, I believe. But they would take a ton of residual and pro would actually die to the residual, so that's probably not right. Oh no, Scabs can't kill the Geddon in one hit because he used the ability last turn. Yeah, oof. That's really rough. And uh, that's going to seal it up here for Sir Jack. Yeah, Master Puppet knows it. GG's. And so, Surjack will advance. Game one. Rooting for Zampage a bit here, because uh, he's the one who knocked me out. I really like his comp, though. It, it's very, very powerful in terms of just the raw damage output. The combination of Thrall and uh, Galvangar here is very strong. All right, so I I think I think Zampage opener is here is kind of favored. The Deathwing is going to be a little annoying, but not really because Anixia block taunt. <laughs> so uh, and going to gain some extra stats for that. Look at that! That's so huge! Wow. Killing Varden on turn one, but the Thrall does die. And, uh, curious to see what the swap in for both players is here. With two greens on the bench, you have to be thinking, oh wow, is Zampage actually thinking Blink Fox? I was kind of thinking maybe a red, but... Zampage going with the Fox. All right, so in comes Sneed. Sneed should actually be quite good here for Izzy's. You really want to kill off this Anixia before she gets another hit in. You really want to get this Anixia gone as soon as possible. Hmm. So, what ability did he roll on the fox? Oh, he stole the Sneed's ability! That's insane, dude. Oh, but it doesn't have active saw active, so it's not quite as crazy as it would have been. Still, looking very powerful position, but wow. I mean... A lot of stuff died for Zampage there. Izzy's is not out of this game at all. He actually might even be in the better position right now. The thing is, though, this blue is weak, and Zampage's bench here is rather red-heavy. 
as we saw in my games, I think he's going to have a very hard time dealing with this Vandar. I think Vandar is kind of the, the anchor of Zampage's team here. Because he just gets out of control. And if you don't have a good answer, and especially with how many attacking units there are in a lot of these comps, that residual damage is a ton. Looks like Zampage is opting to aim for the Sneeds here, as well as finishing off the Chi-Gi. I like that. What did they get on the, the Blink Fox? Looks like it's Active Saw. I'm just going to swing in there with the, the taunt. Yeah, active saw sniping there is pretty, pretty powerful. But the, the Vandar is going to grow. Job done. It's interesting. Didn't grow crazy. In comes, oh wow, Edwin Eudora. That's actually insane. And just like that, I think Izzy says a real shot to win this. Oh, but another buzz. Blink Fox doing the best scabs cosplay possible. Just stealing scabs every time. However, she's going to get sniped by this uh, Eudora at zero speed. So she's not even going to get it off here. The real question is, though, are these greens going to be enough to deal with Vandar? I think Izzy's can clean up these two, but Vandar's going to be a problem. Maybe the cannon helps out, though. Oh, this one does have act active saw. Look at that, and gets to kill the cannon because of it. And Izzy's does not go for the snipe on Blink Fox. I can't believe that. Oh, I guess he was thinking the cannon would get the kill, but the cannon, one of them dying, made it so that Blinkbox is still alive. And looks like Coupe de Ta was the uh, the stolen ability here. Not, not particularly great, but it can get off some damage. I think Izzy's might win this. I think he has enough. And Izzy's wins with the cannon! Wow. Wow. So, alright, I was wrong. Summoning the cannon was fantastic there. We're gonna swap to Izzy's perspective for the next game. All right, looks like Zampage running it back. Izzy's running it back too, though. So I think both of them might be saying here, I felt pretty confident in how it went the first game. I just need, you know, to go a little bit more in my favor. Because that game one was very, very close. All right, so this is kind of a repeat of what we saw. And Izzy's has got to be happy about that. That Anixia is scary, though. You really have to find a way to kill it, but it is slower. And you're kind of okay with your Deathwing dying. Looks like Zampage going for the same swapping again, so we are seeing... Oh, it's a different Anixia equipment? Ah, Insolent Mortal, you're right. So they actually gain more attack this time around. So Anixia is even more of a threat. Job done. Interesting. 
I'm I'm surprised he's not going for the taunt. I guess Anixia blocks it anyway. Oh wow! Doesn't go for the swing. I feel like that's got to be greedy. I guess I guess they were worried about Deathwing blocking it. But that that feels kind of greedy to me. Because now Eudora can has a chance to snipe it down, and Izzy's can actually stack fours here. So, oh, but now Eudora can't snipe it down because Zampage has the taunt. Though the option for, uh, you could still buzz, but it looks like he's going to buzz on the taunt. Maybe just going to let Anixia die to the residual damage, or the cannon shot, potentially. Assuming the, uh... The taunt dies. Looks like he's going to summon another cannon. I kind of like that. Although you do have to be very scared here of Anixia AoE, and it feels like Izzy's isn't really respecting the Anixia AoE. I think... But there's some mind games there to that. If this Anexia AoE goes off, though, it's going to be pretty devastating. Oh, yeah, Blink Fox could get a, a fire ability, right? From Chi Gi. Oh, and. Oh, and she. Oh my god, that just called it. That's huge. Oh my god, they're going to get the AoE off. Wow. That was disgusting. Yeah, he needed to kill Anixia there. It feels like it feels like not going for her. I mean, obviously he got more punished because of the Blink Fox roll, but it feels like 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 I was saying, the it feels kinda greedy not trying to kill that Anixia. And now he's in kind of a rough spot. There are a bunch of summons. He's got two weak blues, but not really a great way to, uh... To deal with them. Chi Gi can get the AoE, but that's not even going to clean up the summons. And I think this one's going to be... Zampage taking it home really punished by that Anixia AoE, so I guess I was wrong about the heal on Anixia being wrong there. It really paid off for him, especially with that Blink Fox high roll off the stealing the fire ability. Just allowed him to nuke the, uh, the Sneeds. Does kill the Anixia. Actually, wow, I mean, that was pretty good. That was pretty good for Izzy's. Oh, Arcane Fling would have done the same damage. Well, it's still cool. <laughs> it's not over yet, though, it seems. Because now there is an easy kill on the Naga here. No, but Izzy's is saying he's going to take the three-speed flip. However, he should definitely order this differently. He wants, uh, he wants Shiji to go first. Alright, looks like it didn't matter, and wow! I don't think there's a there's a way back here for Izzy's now. Or not Izzy's for Zampage. I think Izzy's even with that initial mistake, that big Chigi clear looks like it was probably enough to 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 take it home. I'm really surprised by that. It's just too much damage. You get the cannon shots, yeah, this is over. Wow. So even with what looked like a misplay, Izzy's was able to flip it back around.
All right. So we haven't seen K-Bar's team in action yet. Looks like he has kind of a human holy thing going, which I like. Reno, Tyrion, Anduin open. Interesting. Sir Jack goes with the Lich King and Grom Rogers. Okay. So we've seen before the Rogers can get kind of out of control, but I think this is a really nice opener for Kpar. I think it lines up really well. We don't really care if the Tyrion takes damage or dies, but Reno's going to protect it either way. There is a flip here if uh, Sir Jack does go for skill two. It looks like Kpar did target them with that, so they're trying to redirect the slow and the damage off of Tyrion. Or no, they're actually targeting Lich King. Nope. Which is probably better. Probably better. From Sir Jack's side... It's gotta feel a little bit awkward, I think, for Sir Jack. Goes for the slow on the Reno, anyway. So just trying to get the Reno down. Because the Reno... Well, now the Reno can't protect this turn. But now the Anduin can get the AoE off, and Sir Jack does not have any greens in his lead, so it's really going to be kind of tough to kill this Anduin. Especially with Tyrion shrinking his main source of damage here in the Rogers. Yeah, that's a ton of damage. Goes for a heal on the Rogers, much like we saw last game, but the Rogers just took so much damage. Yeah, I'm I'm really liking Kpar's kind of position here. It feels like it lines up very well against what Serjak is trying to do. He's kind of putting Serjak on the back foot here. This Anduin's starting to get out of control, and with only one green on the bench. And looking at Sir Jack's comp here, he, Sir Jack only has one green, so we know it's Diablo. And I don't think Diablo really... I mean, maybe Diablo can set up a crit with other things to get rid of the Sanduin. But it's going to be kind of tricky, I think. Worth noting, the Reno Taunt is too slow, so they, Sir Jack can get in more damage. Oh, but Sir Jack's thinking... Buffing up the Reno, which honestly, I'm kind of surprised. I thought he would go kind of all in on the, uh, or Kpar is thinking of buffing up the Reno. I thought he would kind of go all in on, uh, buffing the Anduin, but it looks like that's not the case. Looks like he's saying, I want the Reno to live so I can heal it and keep scaling the Anduin. The Anduin's enough of a threat on its own. And he's saying, I can kill the Rogers before it gets to swing, however... If Sir Jack slows Anduin, that might not be the case anymore. And it's a I think it's a pretty easy read here to slow the Anduin. No, he goes wow, he goes for the Tyrion just to snipe it down. And you've gotta like that outcome if you're K Par here. Just thinking what to send in. I personally kinda like Mukla. It look I do not see the big bro, so it's probably one of the banana equipments, I think. But you could go for Holy Synergy here with Yorel or Tyrael. They are buffed now, so they're pretty, pretty big. Looks like he's gonna go with Yorel. Into Diablo Geddon. I mean, Diablo Geddon are scary, but... I don't know if it's it's really going to be enough here. The holy comp's looking really good. Thinking about what to do with Urel.
So skill skill three on Reno. Yeah, that's pretty good. Restore the health, deal it to a random. Looking, it'll grow the Anduin even more. I really like the synergy on Kpar's team here. It's got to be wow, not AOE from the Anduin. Looks like he's opting to save that for next turn. Which I don't really mind, and going for skill 3 with Urel. Urel does take quite a bit of damage. Oh, and Urel does die. It's gotta be... Oh, he's just gonna slam Tyrion. Or Tyrael. I would've thought Mukla there, personally. But maybe you're scared of Mukla and Tegeden. Now they get to go for the, the Anduin AoE into the Holy Combo, though, and that will freeze the Geddon. However, if, uh, if Surjax slows the Tyrael, it will not freeze the Geddon in time. So it looks like he's going to opt for skill one, actually, instead, realizing the slow. Yep. Again, that Anduin's getting a little out of control. Yeah, getting a double kill there is really nice. So it's Diablo and... We'll see what his last unit is here. Diablo and Ragnaros. So the Rag coming in here. I think you're pretty happy if you see this as Kpar. So Kpar can go for a a combo here to freeze the Ragnaros, but oh no, your characters cannot be frozen because of the Rag. Interesting. So I wonder if Kpar is going to notice that. Very interesting. I mean, either way, I think you go for the damage, but this Diablo is actually looking to be very problematic. Oh, that's a pretty big meteor. But Mukla is going to provide a really good answer to Diablo, and I think even though they're low health, the Anduin Reno combo here is going to be good enough for Rag. So I, I think I'm in favor of Kpar here. Especially because their units are also faster. So even if Sir Jack does try and get a kill this turn, Kpar kind of has a chance to heal up beforehand, scale the end to win a bit. And it is radioactive bananas, which is really good on Mukla in this position. I like that choice a lot. Yeah, that is true, because uh, Reno's thing is only working for the current turn, which is a bug. Uh, we do not get to see kind of next turn taunt abilities by using this at a slower speed. But even with that, I think Kpar is in a pretty commanding position here. And I do like going for the AoE here. I think it's just probably safer. Because there's no way for Sir Jack to combo Ragnaros to get the kill on this Anduin. You heal up, you scale up a bit. And that Mukla's just gonna smack Diablo all the way back to hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's a 60 damage attack, and that's gonna close it up for our, uh, our game here. Boom, and, and Kpar will take it down here. Really, the strong performance from the Holy Comp. We're gonna see if they make any changes. We'll watch, uh, Surjack for game number two.
Looks like they are going to make some changes. Kpar staying with what they did before makes a lot of sense. And Sir Jack did swap it up, so now we've got a Diablo open. Now that's some spice. I like it though. I really do like the Diablo open here. I think you. I mean, he doesn't have any other option in terms of a good, powerful green. So I think he's saying, you know what? I can use Diablo if I can find a way to protect him, which is kind of what seems to be the game plan here with Uther and the Lich King. And getting some slows down on top of it to make the uh, the fire stomp even better. Yeah, it can be difficult, Zampage, when you're you're one color heavy. I learned that the last draft. I was missing reds, I think, and I had a hard time. So I'm curious if we'll see K-Park go for a similar line that he went for before. I kind of like using the Reno to, uh, yeah, to hit the Uther there. That seems pretty good. And I like focusing down the Lich King here from Kpar. I think he realizes the Lich King is being used more for sustain by Surajak. And so he really doesn't want that Diablo sticking around forever. Wow, and opting to heal the Lich King itself... It's an interesting line. The problem is this fire stop really isn't doing a whole ton. I mean, it's possible you kill the Reno here. Yeah, he definitely wants the sustain. I just think against these two blues, it's going to be really hard to sustain. But maybe it's possible. Forty is a lot of health. The Reno does die. What are the rattles? The healing is pretty huge. Wow, double heal. That's so big for Kpar. Now the Anduin's just getting out of control. That was, yeah, that was really, really good for Kpar. Holy comp looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. And as we did see earlier, the, uh, the buff for Uther was also relevant to this game. Or not this game, but this, uh, this event. Last series for Sir Jack. In comes Urel. And I, I like Urel here. I think it's a good swap in. I mean, you've got two healthy holy units. Now you can use Urel skill three for just a boatload of damage and they're not really that threatened. Uther can't really combo with Diablo because they're one speed faster. Wow, going for the, uh... The heal and the taunt with Lich King. Trying to punish them for swinging in. I guess the idea is to punish the Uther for swinging for the uh, the death blow. Oh wow! 
But, uh, jokes on Sir Jack, because Kpar doesn't even swing. It just works on ramping up their units, and that is now a very large URL. Who needs a Tyrion death rattle when you have that going on for you? Like, whew. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it too, Infinity. I think the last wave was really good, and it'll get better uh, once some of the characters with bugs are fixed. So it's looking really tough here for Sir Jack, though. Trying to make the Diablo live, but it, it feels like Sir Jack's trying to like stop the bleeding here, but he just can't. The Holy Comp has kind of snowballed. And now it can just keep healing. He doesn't have the burst damage needed. Interesting. Ah, okay, going for the crit here as like a Hail Mary. I kind of like that. The problem is, there's still no answer for this Anduin. And Sir Jack's just slowly getting whittled down here. The healing he has is not enough to compete with his opponent's healing and scaling. He's been doing a good job of keeping the Diablo alive, but it doesn't really matter if the Diablo is alive if Diablo isn't dealing enough damage here. And I do like this line, but it just feels like such an uphill climb for Sir Jack here. Wow, look at that. Goes to the slow ability, so doesn't even get the, the combo he was going for there. And that's gonna, that's probably gonna just seal the deal here. I think Sir Jack is gonna play it out, cause as, as you should in an event. Go for any chance you have, but I just don't see... Doesn't even have a way to fire combo the, the Baron Geddon anymore. And this just goes to show... Combos and mercs that are on the surface that appear, you know, super OP and ones that we are used to from uh, PvP on ladder don't always transfer over to draft, even when you get those combos and whatnot. Like, Holy hasn't been showing up at all on the PvP ladder, but here it's just absolutely decimating some very popular and powerful characters in the Fire Comp, Grom... Rogers, these are all very powerful mercenaries. But the Holy Comp, I mean, it's it's just like it used to be, right? When the Anduin just gets out of control. So, I do like the line with the Living Bomb. I think that's kind of a, a cute and clever play, but... It's just not gonna be enough here. Now, you can technically get the Snipe down, but... k still has two Mercs on the bench and an 100 plus HP Anduin. So, I think we know how this is gonna go. Yeah, and that is the killing blow, the little death blow for insult to injury, and Kpar will take it down 2-0 to advance to our finals. So the interesting thing about Izzy's comp here is he could go, and I think he did go, with a pirate opener, which I like much, much better. I, I don't think you can afford to go with the fire deathwing opener versus uh, the holy comp. And it looks like Izzy's agrees here. 
But Kpar decided to swap things up a little bit too. Wow. Swapped up his comp a ton. You gotta imagine he was predicting Izzy's knew what he did last game and he wanted to kind of adjust. And I think he did a good job of doing that. Yeah, the fact that Izzy's got, uh, oh, thank you, Garrison. <laughs> I didn't realize I still had the, uh, the comps up. We didn't miss anything yet, though. It's, uh, it's a pirate opener versus, so, Kpar has Mukla, Tyrion, Guff. So I like that swap up from Kpar. You gotta be... You, well, the only awkward thing is you can't really combo the guff until the next turn. But maybe that's kind of okay. I guess you could swing with the guff even. That's if the guff lives. Oh, looks like guff is just dead. No, guff is gonna get a swing. And guff does get the kill, but does die. But I think you're okay with that. You basically trade Guff for Sneeds, which I think is a very acceptable trade from Kpar's end. Izzy's does have the health advantage, but now Tyrion can shrink something this turn to kind of uh, make it a little bit harder. You do have to be a little bit scared of a potential snap, though. Because Kpar's units are on the slower side. Oh, and in comes Cariel. We didn't see Cariel at all last game, but against the pirates, I really like it. We all know from the human comp on ladder that Cariel is a force to be reckoned with. And two cannons, I mean... The interesting thing, though, is Tyrion could, in theory, you try and use the cannon to get a death blow for the, uh, the Divine Shield. But that is a risky play. Because Tyrion could also just die. I do wonder if we're going to see Mukla be used defensively or offensively here. I think it's going to be offensive. I think you have to go on that offensive here. But if he goes for the Divine Shield play, maybe he uses the defensive taunt. Oh, but he uses Cariel for the taunt instead. Okay. And the cannons do get some pretty devastating shots here. Tyrion dodges the Varden, though. I think that's pretty big. Good positioning from Izzy's on the cannons. Edwin down. And the Divine Shield is huge. That saves his units from the cannons. So Kpar did go for the play we were talking about. And now this is looking a little bit more awkward for Izzy's. But Kpar is on very, very low health with his units. Though the other nice thing is the Tyrion now has a very quick snipe down here. With 33 attack, you can basically almost one-hit that Chi-Gi. These cannons, I do think, are going to be a problem, though, for Kpar. Because he really doesn't have AoE. However, if the... Uh, you have to be very careful here as Izzy's with that Karyl. Because if that Karyl gets a death blow. Everything flips around in this game. But I think he is going to respect that. And it looks like the carryall is slower here by Varden. Two times slower by Varden. It looks like Mukla... Yeah, Mukla is slower as well. Yeah, if Kpar just had, you know, one more banana on that... Uh, at Tyrion, he would be able to insta-kill the Chi-Gi. <laughs> yeah, look at these cannons. Gonna go for the Eudora here, right? Yeah. Which makes sense, but dies to the cannons. 
Now it's look at look at all these cannons, and it's probably maybe Anduin and Tyrael or Anduin and Urel here. Anduin Tyrion. I mean, this is still potentially anyone's game, but the cannons are really problematic for Kpar. Because Anduin's AoE is not enough to deal with them, and that's a lot of damage. On top of the damage you're going to be taking from your opponent's attacks. Chiji is fast enough to guarantee some damage in. Yeah, wait, we have Golden Cannons and the Pleb Cannon. That's kind of funny. All right, and big hit there. Wow. Hmm. Maybe the golden ones were summoned off of the skill. I mean, this is actually kind of looking okay for Kpar now, isn't it? The cannons are still scary, but... I mean, I guess you can actually, actually, no, you can just heal with the Chi-Gi, and if you heal these cannons, there's just not an effective way for Kpar to deal with them. The Anduin is going to keep scaling off of the heals, though. Oh, and that will kill Tyrael. And the funny thing about these cannons is they can only hit one at a time. Is there a chance Kpar can just sustain here? Does Izzy... No, but he can freeze. Yeah, this is really interesting. So... Definitely going for a freeze here, but then they can heal again, and now Izzy's doesn't have a way to heal up his cannons or other units. Job done. Oh, that's a good, yeah, that's a good idea. If you attack with the, uh, the, the weak cannon, you will get two cannon hits. Oh, Izzy's didn't go for the freeze there. I'm kind of surprised. Wow. But I think Izzy still gets there if he freezes now. Because you can... You can freeze. And then the Varden slow will still be there the next turn. So you can freeze. It to oh, he's not going to... Oh, is that just lethal? Now it's lethal. Now Varden just kills. Whew, that was actually a much closer game than I was expecting, though. So Izzy squeaks out a win there. He had a pretty commanding position from the start, but the, the Anduin on the bench almost was a lot of trouble. And looks like Kpar is mostly running it back. Did make one substitution on the bench, though. Did toss out the carryal in favor of Yarel. So, full pirates from Izzy's here. 
it worked out pretty well for him last time. So I, I definitely like running it back. It does make things very awkward for this guff, but again, I think you're kind of fine with the trade, trading the guff for the Sneed. You really need that Sneed to be gone here with your green heavy bench. Oh, Yashiraj was by the lead designer. That's cool. I'd imagine you'd have to get all the old gods done at a similar time, given how their abilities affect other old gods. Alright, so it looks like Kpar going for the, the triple seven here. And good positioning with the, the guff. The rolls on the banana do end up mattering here. And look at that. Just shy this time. Oh, wow. And the double cannon shots. Very interesting. So this is this is kind of rough for Kpar here. The pirates are proving to just be very uh very difficult to deal with. Oh, interesting. Does Atos finish before Yashiraj? So, what is the best swap in here? You, I don't think you can do Anduin into these two greens, but... The problem is, if you send in your reds, you get cleaved by the Sneeds. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. And, oh, Kpar just says, that's it. I can't win this. And, uh, I can't say I really blame him in that position. I mean, it hurts losing that role. It definitely hurts. He really needed that hit on the guff with the banana. But that is going to mean Izzy's is our champion here. So Izzy's is going to take it home 2-0. Again, I think both the, the comps here were, were very good. Just sometimes these comps are very, very matchup dependent. Um, and I think the pirates were just really, really hard. Yeah. That's what I was saying, Kpar, like, you really needed that Sneed to die. Like, not getting a second banana on Guff and the Sneed living at two, you were, like, screwed. It, no matter what you sent in. Because if you send in the greens, you get cleaved. If you send in Anduin, he just dies to the, the greens. Like, get living on two is disastrous. But, again, good games to everybody. Hey, 6-0, and oh, nice, Izzy's. Taking it home. Well played by everybody. Great uh, great comps. I really like the comps quite a bit. I'm going to take a screenshot of the, the bracket here. We can show the bracket here. Final record. But yeah, well played to everybody. Thank you for participating. Yeah, I liked your your change and what you swapped up, but the pirates were just... I mean, Izzy's got all the good stuff with the pirates, really. The only thing he was missing was patches, and patches didn't even make it into the draft pool.